life, the challenges we go through have a way of throwing situations at us that nothing has prepared us for. My guest today has been homeless and been a cleaner. But when she had an encounter with Jesus, it all changed. She now owns a chain of childcare settings. Listen as she tells her story, and then we can see the glory. Hi, Caroline Popola. Hi. Nice to have you here today. Thank you for having me. Tell us, seriously, did you actually squat? Were you actually homeless for a period? Oh, yes, definitely. <laughs> I know it's hard to believe now, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but yes, um, when I came back to England, I came back to England when I was um, 17. Right. Um, like most of us, born here, went back to Nigeria and then okay. came back. And um, I stayed with my mother's friend for a year. Okay. And I just couldn't stand it. So I called my mum that the choice she had was I returned back to Nigeria because I felt I had a good life. There was no reason for me to be here. Yeah, right. um, and um, she came down instead. Right. Okay, hold that touch for me. We're gonna come back to that. Let's go a bit backwards. So tell us a bit about yourself, your background. So just like you've mentioned, so you were born here and then you went back to Nigeria. Um, were your parents married? Did they separate? Hmm. Unfortunately, no. So. Um, <laughs> They met here, All I right. think fell in love, whatever that is, yeah. um, then had a baby, which right. is me, okay. and then mum decided she, she wanted to go back to Nigeria and dad felt he wasn't ready, right. so she left without him. Right, um, so you were a result of a... Yeah, whatever you want to call, call it. Call it right, basically. <laughs> whatever you want to call it. <laughs> right, but okay. obviously I'm in Christ, so yeah, that's what exactly. matters. <laughs> and we'll come to that, we're going to talk about that. And the re re reason why I wanted to emphasise that mm. is the beauty of when Jesus comes in, mm. where all those stigma that the world will want to put over you, yeah. how the presence of Jesus just er erases everything. Yeah. So take, going back to Nigeria, what was that like? What was the life like after you've lived here? How many was, years were you here? I went back to Nigeria when I was nine. Right. Okay. Um, obviously, I couldn't remember much. Right. But the one thing I know was after the first year we lived in Lagos, after the first year, mom just worked every hour God sent. Right. So that oh. meant we were left alone for a very, very long time. Right. And at one point, um, I think 1980 or so, mm. she went to Abuja. Right. Um, to go Did and try with her. No, right. to go and try her hands in business, right. and obviously as a result, she left myself and my sister in Lagos with um, neighbours. You know, like in Niger the culture of Nigeria, yeah. everybody, everyone looks after everyone, right. isn't it? So, so um, not with family, with not with family because right. we 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 do, we do have family. Everyone's yeah. got family, but. Yeah. We're just not close to any right, family, okay, you know, friend. so. Um, and um, unfortunately, um, she didn't come back as she planned to come back. So it felt like we were almost abandoned at one point. Mm. Um, but I wouldn't highlight that so much because based on what I've been through, mm. that's what's made me who I am. Mm. So even though it might come out as being negative, mm. it's not actually a negative thing, mm. you know, so as a result of being abandoned or left for a little while, mm. um, the person looking after us, I had to hook some bread um, Sorry, before I go to that? school. So, you had, <laughs> so hawkers didn't have the, yeah, yeah, tray, the tray and go out head, yeah, after bread, school. Yeah. Stuff in it. Yeah. So for a minute, just, I feel like telling you to look at the camera so they can see how pretty you are. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone can see how pretty you are. And at one stage in your life, you've, you've had to... No, I think that's just, that's just life, you mm -hmm. know? Um, I mean, now looking back, I, our, years later, I just think, wow, what a life. And mm. yes, that would bring tear to my eye because yeah. I know we were so comfortable. My mom had everything. There was no reason for it. So we weren't struggling or anything, mm. you know? Um, but it's so unfortunate that she felt she was doing the right thing. Yeah. And while she was away, mm. um, so many things happened, right. um, which obviously, um, unfortunately, they were negative, very, very yeah, negative yeah, and yeah. very downcasted, but okay. that's just life, you know. So that happened for a little while. Okay. And every time she came back, if we had said that, she wouldn't believe it because she just think, no, this was just so lovely. They can't right. do that to you. Yeah, you just right. think, yeah, whatever. 
you know, okay. but eventually we all went to Abuja together. Okay, so, so you moved with her Yeah, to we moved okay. with her. So that phase sort that of That phase is that out, yeah. you know, for a little while. But so. obviously that's an experience one would never forget. Oh God, it, never. Yeah. I think it's just one of those that, and I think because you, you don't know any better. Mm. I just felt, okay, this is probably some things you have to go through in mm. life. You know, that was my childhood, right, yeah. you know, so... Um, but I think the only reason it was very negative for me at the time was mm. the fact that she was very comfortable. We right. were very comfortable. Yeah, it's another there thing was if no, you knew that yes. there, there was if a we need were, for Exactly, yes. there was no need for it. Right. So it's just the fact that she just believed her friends over her children. Right. And she was so tied up into wanting to be successful mm. and forgetting her first love, which yeah, is her, her children. children you know? yeah, so yeah. I think that's what it was. That's definitely one you know? for women. But you know she does care. You mm. know she loves, I mean, like any mom, she mm. loves us a bit. She was a single mom. And... Yes. Um, yeah, she got married twice, three times, um, mm. or twice with one that wasn't a wedding. Mm. But you know, but um, and she had four children. Okay. But she brought us up on her own. You right, know, yeah. so we okay. had that period of not having a father or male figure there. Yeah. Which I'm sure will come we'll, to. We'll come to again <laughs> in a few minutes. Okay. So moving on from that period, then you then came here. Yes. And then when you got here, what then happened? You then had to leave with yeah, a family, um, friend. family friend, and um, we obviously she came back, and mm -hmm. we I squatted for a little while. Okay. Um, and we, ha we actually, it's quite funny, we actually broke into <laughs> I was going to say, how did you get into? Well, obviously at the time, yeah. you had all these people that you know who know who and whatever. And I was young, 17, mm. so I had all these friends that knew how to get whatever you needed to get. Mm. So they literally, um, we, they liked my mom because she was like a mom to everyone. Yeah. So they just... Um, she told them, oh, we need somewhere to stay. Okay. Um, I've come to look after my daughter and she's not happy where she is. And right. I need, and they just broke into the flat for us in Camberwell, right. you know, and I was there for a very long time. Yeah, mm. I, um, I think probably for about two years or so, right. um, she came and then within six months she went back and I stayed on. So you were there on your own? On my own, yeah. yes. So what was um, the house party <laughs> more house party what was the environment like this obviously it's, it's an abandoned building yeah and, uh, but we just touched it up a bit you right. touched it up and it was okay, okay. to live and in and just we had it to do i'm not it? sure if you if you've had ex actually experienced you know where you have one of those tvs that you've got to stand in a particular position to make it work <laughs> <laughs> had one of those yeah, yeah one of them. <laughs> <laughs> it was one, the yes it was one of those i remember you saying something yeah. about you know oh yeah um the reason I moved out yeah. was because, obviously, I wasn't paying any bills. Right. Okay. You, you just had everything, you know. Mm. And um, I moved out because I just had enough of cockroaches in the fridge. I mean, I didn't mind them at first, mm. but it was when they started going into the fridge and into well, your food. I'm thinking, no, can't oh. do this anymore. <laughs> you know, so I just thought, no, that's it. Okay. I had to go. So I literally packed a bag. Mm. And went and sat with the, um, at the council office right. and sat there all day, mm. literally night time. Mm. And um, they saw that I weren't moving, I weren't going nowhere. Mm. <laughs> that I genuinely just said I haven't got anywhere to live. Yeah. I couldn't tell them I was squatting because they said go back to where you were, you know. So, right. And because I just had enough, you know. So I, I, I think at that time I was almost thinking I really do need to get my life That's together, right. sort right. of, whatever that meant. Yeah. Because then. I was still very young as well. So it's like, to me, it's like, whatever that means let's mm. just go and get something mm. and um i at that same night the same day they um rang up an hostel for me to stay in right okay and it's called um, providence row i don't know okay. you never know mm, yeah. um and uh, if anyone knew, know about it but mm. providence row and um thinking back it was like a big massive hostel right. so you can imagine a hall mm. and they had curtains in between wow. each bed. Wow, so that was what demarcated. Yes, yeah. from one person to the other person. Mm. And obviously the reason they do that is because if you were truly homeless, you'd actually stay. Yeah, because you'd appreciate any yes. space, isn't it? So yeah. because me being very vocal, mm. and I, I spoke to the people running it, and they literally explained that, that if you stay here for two weeks, We'll get right. you somewhere nicer. So I okay. stayed. Okay. <laughs> so I stayed for two weeks. Okay. And um, I then, from there, moved on to another hostel okay. called Bickens House in um, Allgate. Right. 
and I stay there. I had a bed sit, which is like resort, right. proper, nicely done. So that must be, look like a five-star hotel. Oh, it was perfect. Where you were I mean, from, from mm. because there is all you had all the druggies, you had everyone in needles. Nice. You know, I mean, I've got OCD now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't do dirt, of, yeah. I don't do smell, <laughs> you know, but then it didn't matter. You can did smell you, as much as you want. We're all fine any, together. Did you at any time get involved with any of the drugs? Unfortunately, well, no, unfortunately, no, I didn't oh. because um, it's just not me. I, I, did, I didn't know the reason for drugs or mm. what it did to you or not. I think it just wasn't a lifestyle that, yeah, even though at the time mm. I didn't understand it, mm. I didn't know the influence of it or what it does to you, but I think it's just never me. Mm. Were you a Christian at that time? No. <laughs> well, That's by fine. name, by just, name. Right, okay. Right. <laughs> but okay. no, I wasn't. Yeah. I wasn't practicing or anything at all. No, okay. I wasn't. Yeah, yeah. so, okay. yeah. So I didn't go to church either, no. Okay. <laughs> so, and then obviously this is my gorgeous five-star hotel. Stayed in there <laughs> for a little while yeah. and um, yeah. I remember another thing you mentioned to me about being a cleaner. I know, you were going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> no, but to be honest with you, I, I, I pride myself in talking about my lifestyle because, and the life I've le lived really because to be a testimony, you've got to have gone through That's a right. test. That's correct. And yeah. there's no way you could have, you could have a wonderful testimony mm. if you haven't been through yeah. things in life. Um, you know, so to me, it's, it's just normal. It, it's really weird, isn't it? Mm. I don't see it as being an issue whatsoever. Mm. Yes, whilst I was a beacon house, I was a cleaner. Mm -hmm. I would, because I, could, I didn't understand the, the whole thing of the concept of benefits. Mm. I just don't do it. I couldn't mm. stand it. Mm. I think I, I went the first time and I saw the queue, I'm thinking, no, I'm too mm. good for this stuff. I can't mm. be queuing up. Mm. I just can't stand. I'm not that patient. Mm. And then, you know, I, I just knew it wasn't my style. Mm. So I think all of those just pushed me into, to go you've got to work, yeah, you've got yeah. to do something. Do whatever you need to you know, do. And I remember yes. coming to ne the, live in Nigeria. The first thing my, mud, my mom said to me was like, if you, because I wasn't into education, I mm. hated studying, mm. I failed it's every the paper there was. Right. You know? <laughs> She's gone, I've had enough, just go. You know, so, um, and the one thing she said that I could remember so vividly, if you work as hard as you do in my business now and you work that hard in England, you make it. Okay, so she said that to she you. She said that right. to me. So you'd had that, um, that foundation of working hard rather than yes. relying. Yes, I loved right. working. I loved money when I was in Nigeria. Right. I could, I love the whole fact that mum makes so much and I could take some money. She wouldn't even have taken some money yes. from me, yeah. you know. So mm -hmm. um, I love that. Okay. And I think I grew up with seeing money around me. Right, okay. So, so then w what was your experience then when you went cleaning? Um, and then how did things just progress from I that? Think from being a cleaner, um, and like I said to you, I wasn't sort of, it wasn't like the morning cleaning or night cleaning. Right, okay. It was sort of like an all day thing. So right, I, was okay. all, I was there all day. all day. So they get to know me, I got to know the right. office. Okay. I worked in a company called Aon Insurance, right. so A A O N. Um, they're the largest ones now and um, I worked there as a cleaner mm. and um, I was there for a few months okay. so and I had my CV and had it on one of their tables like the HR department and just left you on one of the tables and, and just left you there. It wasn't even planned. Right. It, I think it was just more like oh yeah that's well, I just put it there you mm. never know you know so you know, I'm think, I think back and I think, did I really, was it like a planned thing? Mm. It wasn't planned. Mm. I just felt, mm, just do it, you never know, yeah. you know. And I did it and they were looking for a filing clerk right. and happened to call the CV on the table. Because I'm not sure, obviously, working for myself now and in my business, I have so many CVs every day and I go through some and think, no, 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 but I don't rip it. And yes. I so, so like put it somewhere. Oh, somewhere, and then yeah. months later, I'm thinking, oh yeah, that's a point. Oh, that looks very interesting. Depending on how desperate I am, you know, right, so, yes. And I think that's probably what happened. Mm. And or maybe God orchestrated. Now we're now looking back fine, and, and yeah. being a Christian now, mm. you know. So um, and they called for a filing clerk. Mm. They called the CV, mm. um, and um, I went in for an interview. And the funny thing, which I said to you, was like because at work, 
I was called Grace Rowland. Right, yeah. <laughs> as a cleaner. Yeah. But obviously, I'm not Grace Rowland, I'm Caroline Popo. Or Mui Bats, Kike Lomo, Caroline You know? Okay. So, <laughs> so they called the CV of Caroline Popo, and I turned up for an interview. Right. And they're like, Grace? Mm. I said, yeah, that's my middle name. <laughs> you know, so, okay. So remember all of this, I wasn't a Christian. Yes, so yes, don't yes. hold me responsible oh, no, no, for no, my actions. Journey, you know? story, exactly, yeah. you know, so, and that was it. Mm. So I started off as a filing clerk. I did that, and I did that so fervently, mm. so I was never late. And I think as well, because as a cleaner, mm. they knew they could call on me to come and do this, and I was there to do it. Yeah. I had a character, I, mm. I had a behaviour that they liked. Right. Yeah. So they knew from being a filing clerk, mm. that would probably yeah. go through as well. I'm sure they would have noticed, obviously, your commitment, I, I, I hard think work, that, I think and all those things yeah. would have obviously yeah. added to yeah. what they were looking, yeah. looking at. Yeah. Right? Okay. You know, so, and from then on, yeah, I just got promoted, and the, the rest of this day is history, mm. you know. So I got trained in being an insurance underwriter. I went to, I did all the exams, mm. you know, and did well in them, you okay. know, and they paid for it, you yeah. know. So it was like, oh, well, not losing anything, okay. you know, so, yeah. So going back in terms of your faith, one of the things I noticed about you, because I was watching a show which you were on, and um, it, it, the, the show had, it was to do with careers and um, encouraging people in terms of their careers. And one of the main things that came across to me in the show was you, you didn't hide your faith. You know, you made it really clear that all that you've achieved in terms of your business growth, where you are, and we're going to talk about that in a few minutes and how you've been able to manage that, irrespective of the background you've mm. had. Mm. Um, and with your focus as a, a Christian and your relationship with God, you've then been able to move on. You didn't hide it in that show. Um, can you just tell us a bit about that? Are you always like that, irrespective of where you are? Because I noticed there were about three or four other guests and you just kept on saying, well, I'm a person of, you know, going back to your faith, going back to where you've been able to get to because of... I think what it is, is um, obviously because growing up, I didn't have that. Yes, I knew we were Christians and my dad's a Muslim. Um, I was going to touch on that because you're... It, you're yeah, more you back. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my dad's a Muslim, but obviously because I grew up with her, yeah. the only way... Um, was being a Christian, but she was like a Salvation Army. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. so, and so that we went to that, mm. and for a little while, when she could be bothered, you know. Mm. So, but I think, um, I don't know, I just, I, if, even being a Christian, how I became a Christian is like, you just think, really? Because I, well, I hope my husband's not watching this. <laughs> Tell us about that. Tell us I, about that. I, I had, I had this, this guy I, I was dating at the time, right. and he had a girlfriend at home. So I, but I knew he went to this church I go to. Mm. So I thought, oh, well, if he's not going to see me at home, mm. and because I obviously can't go to his house, mm. I'll go to the church to look for him. Okay. And the same day, I gave my life to Christ. <laughs> So I never look back. Is, so God is, is awesome. <laughs> you would you know? normally not go. It's usually the other way around, isn't it? You find out that some men go you to a church to look because for, for yeah. women. Yeah. You know. So I. <laughs> so you were yeah. to look for, and you find Christ. Yes. That's what I was looking for, wasn't it? So normally when the the church when they say no, we pray to you, I'm thinking no, I walk to myself, you know, to look for. But you know, God is awesome, and mm. I think. I think because of all of the things I've been through in life mm. and how I've just somehow not been scarred by it, yes. you know, not being a victim and all of I just think he takes it all, mm. you know, he takes all the glory because, mm. and hence, what's the point? What is there outside Christ? Mm. I don't understand. You know, I, I, normally my friends would, I'm not the holy and thou sort of Christian. I am so laid back i'm so i love life to the fullest and i try and leave you as much as i can mm. you know i'm so vain and so many other things <laughs> you wouldn't relate to being a christian mm. but i think that's just me mm. i think your relationship is it's what so you nice. have in your heart yeah. with god and it's it's not what you do in church it's not what you do on the outside mm. it's what you do at home mm. what do people see you for mm. what do your children see you that's for right yeah you know, and that's what it is yeah and the fact that in a show like that you know you talked about how um god helps you to build the business mm. Mm. making it very clear mm. to me that just shows that you're not a christian that would separate 
their Christian life. So they're where they, you know, not judging anyone. Mm. But, you know, we, we, at times we might find ourselves wearing the Christian hat on Sunday, taking it off when it comes Monday, and then you're back to your normal self. And, and then again, the Christian hat yeah. on, you know, it's a way of life, mm. it's a relationship. Mm. 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 And that's what matters. So wherever you go, you, you, you strike oh, my eyes open to mm. say, you know, this is how I got yeah. there. It wasn't by my doing in any shape or form. If it was to go back to the things that happened to me when I was young, I wouldn't be here. Because you, know? yeah. you could very yeah. easily have fallen yeah. into drugs yeah. Yeah. when you were living, you were yeah. practically leaving yeah. with them, you know. Yeah. Um, and, and that's what. So after you then met your, you know, you, you went to church and then you gave your life, what's been your journey since then? And I want you to also t touch on your business, your home, and the amount of people you've actually got employed now. So you're going from someone who used to be a cleaner, because that's your story, isn't it? <laughs> that's what your story is about. Yeah. Um, I think, obviously, finding Christ again, it's just, you just sort of like, just, um, to me, it's just another normal day. Mm. And I'm thinking, okay, it looks like, yeah, I did cry because I don't understand it. Mm. Um, but that's fine. We'll just take one day at a time. And mm. I mean, from being a party person and a club person to not going at all. Mm -hmm. And that's not because somebody preached to me to say, um, it's wrong to go to church, um, wrong to go clubbing or wrong to go. Mm. Um, I've never been a drinker. I've never been a smoker. Yeah. It's just never been part yeah. of, so there was nothing I needed to sort of like drop or yeah. leave behind that. I just knew in terms of my relationship mm. with God, I need to build that, mm. you know, and I think the teaching we had at the time um, in the church, church yeah. was very, very strong. Okay. It wasn't the fire or you die sort of thing. It was right. more very up to date, um, contemporary sort of like message that right. as a baby Christian, that's what you want to hear. Yes, and I think, to, yes, yes, you know, and um, if I, if there was a message that sort of like hurt my spirits, like mm. I remember with the one that stood out so clearly was when they were talking about having an absent dad and things like that. Oh, yeah. And where I've never seen him, I mean, I, I, the last time I saw him, I was eight or nine. Up to and now. Yeah, and no, um, I saw him 20 years later. I was oh. going to get married when, or was it after I got, yeah, after I got married actually. I saw him yeah. in 2000 from... Yeah. 1989 We're or whatever, you know, so, <laughs> no, we'll leave that one, yes, you know, and that was it, you know, right. so, obviously messages like that would sort of like, bring things back home, mm. and you're thinking, oh my God, mm. maybe the reason I feel this way, or be, the reason I had mm. that relationship mm. was because I didn't have a dad there, but mm. I'm thinking, forget that, love, mm. let's get on with it, you know, mm. sort of thing, you know, so, um, but yeah, it was more about, I need to build a relationship with God, and I think, understanding the word from the onset, say, mm. look, if you seek God and his righteousness, mm. all of the things will be... So there was no point me struggling. Mm. There was no point. I'm such a practical Christian. Once you got that understanding. That's yeah, it. That basic and it's sort of like, hold on, God, this is what you said. So why should this happen sort of thing, you know? So it was very, I'm very, very practical. Mm. You know, if I had any challenges at the moment, I will just say, all right, you said take a step of faith. I've taken the step, I need you to do something. Right. You've got to do I this, you've yeah. got to sort this. You know, if I had challenges at work, um, I'd be like, um, really? Mm. You can't provide the business for me to then fail. Fail, oh wow, that's a good That's one. it. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just that practical okay. when it comes to my relationship with God. But for you to do that, you must have a quiet relationship with mm. him, isn't it? You know, mm. so. Again, touching on that relationship again. So you talked about your business just a few minutes ago. Now tell us what you do now. So you've then gone from your career as um, an insurance underwriter, insurance underwriter for about 12 years. Yes. And I was made redundant. And then you just took one, one, one leap and step of faith, didn't I you? know, it's weird. Um, I was made redundant and um, I got home. I, was, I mean, newly married mm. um, and they knew the next step would be having babies, babies because yeah. I'm very vocal. I said, oh, after two years, I'm going to get pregnant. Mm. And um, they knew about it just before two years. They, gave, they made me redundant, you know. Right. So, and um, the fear was, oh, my God, what's my husband going to say? Because mm. I, I was very temperamental at the time and very young. And I, I got home thinking, oh, by the way, I've been made redundant. Oh, yeah, that's fine. You've always hated work anyway. <laughs> Charming, <laughs> you know, so and he's gone. Oh, you've always hated work, mm. really, and um, just try and do something else. You've always thought about childcare and go and do it. And I thought, oh, okay, 
you know yes I made it sound so easy and mm. so simple I mean I felt I was angry with God why should I be made redundant and yeah. I've just got married I've got a new mortgage and things like that you just yes. think all of this finances how we're we gonna deal with it yeah. you know but again if my husband's saying it's okay mm. and he's the head of the home oh, right. and the head of the home is saying it's okay yeah. why am I stressing and that was the word I used for me Mm. that helped me to understand it's okay mm. because mm. my husband said it and God has put my husband as the yeah. head mm. so mm. If, if the head says it's okay mm. it's okay mm. so. and then I was able to move on to think about new challenges and um, the business started so you went into childcare did you have any children then no did you have any experience with no <laughs> okay so how did you view that up <laughs> I just I um I thought about because I, I, I obviously I haven't mentioned it, but I've mentioned it to you in private. I think I'm very lazy, mm. and I always say it. I can I stand on the rooftop are. and think I'm so, <laughs> and say how lazy I am because right. I think I'm so lazy. So the initial thought about starting a business, I didn't think I'm good at anything. Um, I thought, oh okay, what job can I? What business can I do mm. that would not require me working in it? Right. I could just earn money and not mm. work in it. Mm. So that's a lazy thought straight away. Mm. <laughs> so, to me, an it? entrepreneurial talk. <laughs> no, I just felt, you know, and um, I thought, yeah, childcare, I can employ people and I don't mm. have to be in it, you know. Mm. And I um, then I thought, okay, I'm at home, I just go on various training. So, and I'm very, very proactive. I would normally do things as I think about it mm. and just run. So, I called various departments within the, bur the borough I was in and um, how to find out about childcare, what to do, yeah. and started going on training. And within, I think, about two years later, from when I was made redundant, I started the first one. Hmm. So I work with children. I say I work with children. <laughs> I do work with children. So you started with the first one, and over a period of time, how many of you, did you start on your own? Well, you? yes, I did, but my neighbor, right yes. opposite, she's still there, bless her heart, she had two three children okay so i knocked on the door and said right i'm thinking of starting something like this do you fancy working with me because you've got kids i haven't right. come on let's go and do this it's, it can't be so hard it's just mm. common sense isn't it mm. and i think if there was a fire you take them out so what else is there come on <laughs> so, and that's how we started and mm. she obviously it's my business but she thought she'd come and work with me so i paid her right. for working with me okay and that within early. six months mm. she left and then, but before she left, we interviewed other people. But, and I mean, basically, I think, and I know probably that's going to be so, towards the end, but I'll just probably say this quickly. Um, there's so much information online. Mm. And that's where I got a lot of information. So regardless whether you've run a business before or you've never, mm. there's so much online. Mm. If you want to learn, you can learn. Right. And I think that's what I know that's where I've got a lot of my information from. Yeah. How to interview, what to do, you know, there's so much. And online. And, that, and that's what it is, you know, okay. so. Um, so, how's your business grown over the years? Then? You really want to talk about that? <laughs> yes, we do want to no, talk about um, that. Yeah, I have, um, yeah, a few, 10 settings. Right, okay. Yeah. And how many staff and? Um, 54. 54 staff, yeah. right. So, you would say you've done quite well with the business now in terms of all where right, you yeah. coming from. Yeah, all right, yeah, all right, yeah, yeah. I mean, God takes the glory. I don't, I know sometimes when I do say all right, and um, because I'm just, I'm just not one to sort of like make mm. a big deal out of anything, mm. but people think I believe to what God has done, mm. and that's not the intention mm. whatsoever. He, and that's why I, I would constantly emphasize he takes all the glory. Yes. Because I do not, for one second, mm. I know where he's taking me from. I know where we are. And I mean, to have 54 grown-up people listening to mm. me, you just mm. think, really? You know, so. And also from what you've done, from your experience, what you've been through, how have you been able to impact that onto others and then use it too? Because um, I know you mentioned about coaching. Yeah, yeah. yeah I do. I, I have um, um, unofficially. Right. done quite a lot of and there's so many a lot of people mm. friends or people that have now become friends they've started the businesses mm. as a result of me showing them the right way and doing interviews for them right, yeah. and approaching schools for them right. you know sorting out contracts and I enjoy that 
And I, I think I mentioned to you that to me, that's what success is all about. Mm. It's the fact that you can be a blessing to somebody else. And I feel um, I love what I do. Mm. Um, I love the business side of things. Mm. I love the children I work with. Mm. I wouldn't say I'm crazy about children, mm. but I feel God has provided that as a means yeah, yeah. to where he wants me to be a blessing to other people. And I think I mentioned that to you. Yes, and I think yes, that's the yes. way I see my business. I love what I do. Mm. Um, and it's been a blessing to others. I love the most mm. about it. You and know. your staff, Paul, your staff, are they people that you've either um, been able to share about God with them or Christians? Are they people that, because I, I, I see you from what you've said and what you've um, just explained using what God has placed in your hands to be a blessing to other people. You also talked about the fact that you do a charity work a week, every year. <laughs> My church is going to kill me for this. <laughs> don't worry, you don't need to mention your church. But if no, you no, yeah, church, but, yeah. no, but what it is, is um, I, it's only this year actually I've gone on about how yeah. is charity work. Yeah. Because, because my staff constantly, they, he came about me mentioning it because um, they said, oh, I'm off for three weeks. I said, no, I'm off for two weeks. I'm working charity one week, mm. so that's not off. I'm working still, but no, I work with children with my church, um, and we we have um, the vocational Bible mm. school, and we do that with a group of people, and we organise it once a year. And again, it's having to get the really young age, yes. you know, the really the, the things I didn't have to have them very come true. to Christ at a very very very, very tender true. age. Very because true. if you have a very good foundation. You know, they, there's no reason why they should turn out to be or to go through the things I went through. You know, so because they, if you know who you are in Christ from the age of eight, there's difference. no stopping you. Yeah, that's not you know, which I didn't. Yeah. You know, so yeah. Thank you so much, Caroline. That's been a lot of story, especially <laughs> about your past, and it's always um, good to share. You know, because people tend to see the glory. So mm. someone might just say, "Oh, she has ten um, units, uh, businesses doing well, but they haven't seen the hulking period. Mm, mm. They haven't seen the period where you've actually been homeless. Mm. They haven't seen you squatting. Yeah. And that's what this show is about. Mm. It's about sharing those stories, mm. how God comes in and takes you from that low level mm. to the glory that mm. we see now. So thank you for sharing your story with me. You are so welcome. It's been lovely having you on the show. Thank you. And I hope to see you soon. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs>